Hey everyone, welcome to another video in the MongoDB series. In today's video, we're going to learn about the differences between MySQL and MongoDB. Now, I'm sure you must have heard about these database management systems. But do you exactly know what set them apart? Don't worry, I'll help you in this video. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. So let's begin. First, let's look at what exactly is MongoDB. Now, as you all know, MongoDB is an open source, document-oriented, NoSQL database. It is document-based, which means that the data stored is represented in a hierarchical relationship using a single record. And also, MongoDB is schema-free, which means there is no set schema to define how the data is being stored in the database. This causes lesser data migrations. But what exactly is MySQL then? Now, MySQL is an open source relational database management system. Unlike MongoDB, which is document oriented, MySQL is a relational database system. Now, this uses something called as a structured query language, and this is used to access data which is stored in the form of rows and columns. Now, as mentioned earlier, data here is stored in the form of tables with rows and columns and each data field comes with an index representing the data in the table. And SQL is developed and maintained by Oracle. So then what exactly sets them apart? So in the coming section, we look at some of the differences between MySQL and MongoDB depending on certain features. First up is the data structure. Now, MySQL requires you to define your tables and columns before you can store anything. And every row in a table must have the same columns. In MongoDB, you just drop the data in these documents. Also, the data in the MongoDB database is stored in a binary format called as BSON. Next up, we have schema. Now, as discussed earlier, MySQL requires a set schema to define the tables in the database. Now, the database administrator is requested to define a schema which defines how the different tables are being stored in the database. Now, this schema is crucial in case of MySQL. On the other hand, MongoDB doesn't require a prior definition of a schema. Next up is languages. MySQL uses the structured query language to perform actions on the database. It is used to retrieve data, add data, update, create a new data set, etc. In case of MongoDB, it supports a JSON query language to work with data. Next up is foreign keys. Now, MySQL supports the usage of foreign keys. Now, if you don't know what exactly a foreign key is, then SQL uses foreign keys to link one table to another. Now, these foreign keys make data retrieval easy, especially when there are multiple tables interlinked with one another. In case of MongoDB, there's no support for foreign keys. Next up is replication. Now, MySQL supports the master-slave and the master-master replication. In this setup, data set from one master database server can be copied to other servers. In case of MongoDB, it uses something called as sharding. Now, sharding allows partitioning of data across multiple servers using a shard key. Don't worry if you're not able to understand these concepts well. In the coming videos, we'll explain these concepts in detail. Next up is scalability. Now, SQL database can be scaled vertically, while MongoDB can be scaled both vertically and horizontally. Now, horizontal scaling means scaling by adding more machines to your pool of resources, while vertical scaling refers to scaling by adding more power like, for example, CPU or RAM. Moving ahead, let's look at performance. Now, MySQL is optimized for high performance joins across multiple tables, while MongoDB is optimized for write performance. Talking about community support, some of the popular GitHub repositories on MySQL currently are mysql.js slash mysql, and then there's mysql server. And at the time of writing, there were about 222,000 repositories on GitHub with 7 million commits for mysql. In case of MongoDB, Few popular GitHub repositories are MongoDB slash Mongo and Doctrine slash MongoDB. And at the time of writing, there were about 177,000 repositories with about 923,000 commits. 
According to Google Trends, MySQL is largely used compared to MongoDB. So now the question arises, which one should you choose? Well, if your application requires multi-row transactions, like for example in accounting system, then a relational database would be more ideal. But if you're using MongoDB, then it is more suitable for real-time analytics, content management, Internet of Things, mobile applications, and so on. Also, MySQL is a great choice if you have structured data and need a traditional relational database. In case of MongoDB, it is an ideal choice if you have an unstructured set of data. So you could pick your choice. And if you're partial towards one DBMS, let us know in the comment section below as to why you like that particular DBMS. All right, so with that, we come to the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed this video learning about the differences between MySQL and MongoDB. If you have any queries, let us know in the comment section below. We'll be back with more videos, so watch out for them. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.